Hello everyone and welcome to Psalm Studies. So today we will be studying about Polya's problem solving strategies. So first, what are the four strategies that we will be using today? Number one, understand the problem. Number two, devise a plan. Number three, carry out the plan. And lastly, review the solution. Later on, I will show you the different ways to do each step. The first step is to understand the problem. You have to restate the problem using your own words to know if you really understood what the problem is about. And then you have to determine what is known about the type of problem so that you will know what are the given data that you will be using to solve the problem. Next is to find the missing information and to remove the unnecessary information to make the problem shorter and easier to understand. Lastly, you will find the goal of the problem. The second step is to devise a plan. Not all problems are the same, so you have to devise a plan that is suitable to solve the problem. So here are some ways to devise a plan. Make a list of the unknown information. Make a list of the information needed. Draw a diagram. Make an organized list that shows possibilities and make a table or chart. Next, you can also do these things. Work backwards. Try to solve a similar but simpler problem. Look for a pattern, write an equation with corresponding representation of the variables such as x and y, perform an experiment, or even guess a solution and check your result. Now that you have devised a plan, the next step will be to carry out the plan. In carrying out the plan, you have to work carefully to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. You keep an accurate and neat record of all your attempts, and if your plan didn't work, you can modify your existing plan or devise another plan. Remember that giving up is not an option and not all problems are easy to solve. So if the problem is difficult, you can do it in many different ways just to solve it. We are now down to the last step which is to review the solution. This is also known as checking your answers. In this case, you have to be consistent with the solution and interpret the solution in the context of the problem. Make sure to check if there are generalizations of the solution that could also apply to other problems. So let's say that you got the right answer in this problem and this problem is the same with the other problem but the only difference is the given. So you should see and check if your solution here can also work with that other problem. Great! I think we are now ready to solve some problems using Polya's problem solving strategies. Here are some examples. Example 1. I have 3 dresses, 5 sweaters, and 2 pairs of shoes. How many outfit combinations can I wear? Let's try to solve this problem using this table. So, I have 3 dresses, 5 sweaters, and 2 pairs of shoes. How many outfit combinations can I wear? Understand the problem. So, if I restate the problem, it will be like this. How many outfit combinations can I wear if I have 3 dresses, 5 sweaters, and 2 pairs of shoes? It is shorter and easier to understand. Next, I will devise a plan. So, I think I will multiply the number of dresses to the number of sweaters and the number of pairs of shoes together to get the total number of outfit combinations. Next, I will carry out the plan. So, 3 times 5 is equal to 15 times 2 equals 30. So, the answer will be a total of 30 outfit combinations. So, if I review the solution and if I list out all the outfit combinations, will also get 30 and the product of 3, 5, and 2 is also 30. So let's see if we got the right answer. Here's me wearing all 30 outfit combinations. Enjoy!
2. Urban Deca Homes Building 1 has 13 floors in total, but the first floor has no units and is considered as a parking lot. Each floor has 4 2-bedroom units, 8 1-bedroom units, and 12 studio-type units. If 2-bedroom units are allowed to house 6 people, 1-bedroom units can house 4 people, and studio-type units can house 2 people, what is the maximum number of people allowed to live in Building 1? So let's try to solve this problem. So we will use the table again and to understand the problem, here is how I will restate the problem. What is the maximum number of residents in Building 1 if there are 12 floors that has 4 2-bedroom units that can house 6 people, 8 1-bedroom units that can house 4 people, and 12 studio-type units that can house 2 people on each floor? So, I remove the unnecessary information so that we can only use the given data that are needed to solve the problem. Then, I will devise a plan which is subtract 1 from 13 floors because the parking lot does not count. Multiply each maximum people allowed to the number of units in each floor, then add it and multiply the answer to 12. Here's how I will carry out the plan. So, 13 minus 1 equals 12. 4 times 6, 4 being... 4 2-bedroom units and 6 which is the maximum people allowed in 2-bedroom units. So 4 times 6 equals 24 and then I will do that with the other units like 8 times 4 equals 32, 12 times 2 equals 24. Then I will add them. 24 plus 32 plus 24 equals 80. Then the answer will be multiplied to 12 because there are 12 floors that has units. 80 times 12 equals 960. So I will review the solution and the total number of people allowed in each floor is 80 and there are 12 floors that contain units. So therefore, the maximum people allowed to live in building 1 is 960. Okay, so let's solve another one. So another example, I left the unit to go to Deca Mall at 8 o'clock a.m. while my sister left at 8.15 a.m. My speed is 4 meters per second and my sister's speed is 3 meters per second. If the distance from our unit to Deca Mall is 240 meters, how long do I have to wait until my sister arrives at the same destination I went to? So we will use the table again and to understand the problem, I will restate it like this. How long do I have to wait for my sister to arrive at Teca Mall if I left the unit at 8 o'clock a.m. and she left at 8.15 a.m. considering that my speed is 4 meters per second and her speed is 3 meters per second given that the distance from the unit to Teca Mall is 240 meters. See how I removed all the unnecessary information? Then I will devise a plan. I will divide the distance of the unit to Deca Mall to me and my sister's speed separately to get the time it took to arrive at Deca Mall. Then I will add the amount of time to the time we left the unit. Lastly, we will get the difference of her arrival time to mine to know how long I waited. Then I will carry out the plan like this. 240 divided by 4 is equal to 60 seconds or 1 minute. Then I will add 1 minute to 8 o'clock and therefore it will be 8 1 a.m. Then 240 divided by 3 is equal to 80 seconds or 1 minute and 20 seconds and I will add it to 8.15 a.m. So my sister will arrive at 8.16 with 20 seconds a.m. So I will get the difference of 8.16.20 and 8.100 and the answer will be 15.20. So it means that I waited for her for 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Then I will review the solution. I arrived at 8.1 a.m. while she arrived at 8.16.20 a.m. So therefore, I waited for her for 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Let's try to solve example 4. Me and my two siblings are playing stacos. The dice has one face each allotted to one color while two sides are skip turns. What is the probability that I will skip a turn twice in a row? 
So let's see if I understood the problem. What are the chances that I will get to skip a turn twice in a row if the two faces of Stakos dice contains a skip turn? Then I will devise a plan. So this is a probability problem. So first, I will get the probability that I will skip a turn on the first time. And I will multiply it to the probability of rolling a skip turn on the second time. Then I will carry out the plan. So there are six faces in a dice and two of those are skip turns. So the first time, the probability will be 2 over 6. Then I will multiply it to the second time which is also 2 over 6 and the answer will be 4 over 36 or 0 0.11 so the probability that I will skip a turn twice in a row is 11% then I will review the solution there is an 11% chance that I will skip a turn twice in a row because the product of 2 over 6 and 2 over 6 is 4 over 36 which is the probability result that I skip a turn two times consecutively You're doing good guys, we are now down to our last problem. So example number 5. My last 3 online test scores in math are 96, 97, and 99 out of 100. To get an A+, I have to get an average of 98 on 4 tests. What score should I get on the last test to get an A+. See, it gets easier if you get a lot of practice. So restate the problem. If the average score to get an A plus in math is 98 and my first three scores are 96, 97, and 99 out of 100, what score should I aim for on my last test to get an A plus? Then, I will devise a plan. Multiply 98 by 4, the number of tests, and get the total of my first three scores. Then, I will subtract the total of my first three scores from the product of 98 and 4. To get what score should I get on my last test? Then I will carry out the plan. So 98 times 4 equals 392. And then 96 plus 97 plus 99 is equal to 292. 392 minus 292 is equal to 100. So my score on the last test should be 100 or a perfect score. Then I'll review the solution for the last time. If I get 100 on my last test and I add it on my first three scores, I would get an average of 98, which is equivalent to A+. Basically, I have to get a perfect score. Congratulations! That's the end of this video lesson and thank you for studying with me and I hope you learned a lot in this video about Polya's Problem Solving Strategies. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sam Studies, now signing off. Bye!